Good morning, good morning. How are you? Just having a little check in here. A little false start just now, so we're back on. Need to keep a little track on time here. How is everybody? It's Rebecca Thompson here. If you don't know me, I work with women to help them live better, more fulfillment, more energy, less stress. We're getting real practical spirituality for the real world, right? For those of us with businesses, with families, with different hats that we might put on, how can we be our higher self in all of that? And for me, meditation is key. We're going to talk about this. It is the fundamental part of a whole year program that I run, the Be A Beacon program for women. At the that the very essence of that is holding deep, profound presence, a deep, profound centering of yourself so that no matter what, you can stay calm, you can stay clear, you can feel connected, have faith and trust in yourself and in where you're at in life so that when things like three-day lockdowns happen with COVID or relationship stuff happens or whatever happens in your life, you aren't feeling like a piece of flotsam in the water of that experience. You are the steadiness. You are the beacon. You are that unwavering flame and light. So meditation is the muscle, if you like, of presence that we need to get better at to train that muscle to be that unwavering presence. So why do people give up on meditation? I think this is so important. People give up on meditation or they trick themselves into thinking they meditate. I hear people saying, oh, I meditate through music or I meditate walking on the beach or I meditate, um, you know, playing, playing an instrument or listening to something. That's okay. There are different types of presence in action. But the stillness we're talking about from just sitting in meditation is the challenging one and the one that people often give up on. Why do they give up on meditation? I hear you ask. Let me know if this is true for you. They think they're no good at it. They think that their mind needs to be quiet, that it all has to be like angels and the voices of God coming through and everything should be totally serene. And when they don't have that experience, they give up on meditation saying, I'm no good at it. And if I had a dollar for every time I heard someone say, I'm no good at meditation, oh my gosh, I would be a multimillionaire. So I'm here to share with you, there is no being good at meditation. For most people, it is not a serene state all of the time and the voice of God speaking to you and, you know, the harps of angels <laughs> going off. There may be glimpses of that. But most of the time, we are just witnessing the craziness of the mind and everything that goes through it. So let me know if, you, if you're either watching this live or you're watching this on the replay, whether you have had that experience or whether you thought that about meditation in the past or now that I'm just no good at it because, oh my gosh, I can't get my mind to shut up. None of us can get our mind to shut up to some extent. My meditations, I've been meditating for years and years and years are very varied. Sometimes I can sit down and drop into a very tranquil, very expansive, very deep state. And other times it's freaking challenging. I sit down and go, oh my gosh, what was that half an hour of absolute crazy mind junk? <laughs> right? So full permission to have the experience of meditation that you have. And here's the awesome thing. Here is the awesome thing. It doesn't matter whether you have an incredibly expanded half hour state of deep stillness or whether your mind just went crazy for half an hour. The benefits are still there. The benefits are still there. Let me know if you have had this experience yourself, right? I have had sometimes the most craziest distracting meditation. But the fact that I have done it, I've got my butt on my meditation cushion and I have done the practice, I have had the results afterwards. And so what are the results? Why do we meditate? What I find and I know to be true is more calm, more clarity. 
I'm building this capacity, like I said, to be unwavering no matter what. It gives a chance for that mind junk to move through. Otherwise, all those things that we have thought and have come up through the day just kind of get suppressed and shoved away and stuffed under. So in just letting the free reign of the mind without over giving any particular thought, any undue attention, we get to just see and allow this flow through of what may have been arising. And then using some different tools and practices, we are able to perhaps give more awareness to some of those things that might come up that do have an emotional load to them that are a little deeper. But unless we sit and train ourselves to be in presence with them, then we just get caught up in the drama of it and the story of it, or we, you know, suppress it, right? And then later it comes out as physical pain or an emotional trauma release or a very triggered, um, angry reaction or, you know, all the, these different ways that things can come out when we have unprocessed information. So you've probably heard me say before that dis-ease or unease anywhere physically, mentally, emotionally, dramas in your life are all due to accumulation of baggage, physical baggage, emotional baggage, mental baggage. So meditation is one of the key things to allow movement through, a flow through of your day-to-day -day experiences, your day-to-day -day thoughts, so that we don't keep accumulating this baggage. Yeah, let me know if this makes sense for you, if you can relate to this in your experience of meditation. So what else? Yeah, it, it gives the nervous system a chance to pause, to stop, to reflect, to regroup when we are in meditation because we're not taking in any more information through our senses and through our um, mind and information and knowledge and all of that. We're just sitting in what is and that is a deep breath out for our whole body and our nervous system. So the busier you are, the more you need to meditate. The more anxious, depressed, stressed you are, the more you need to meditate. And you can start with just five minutes. I have a twice daily practice of about half an hour, definitely half an hour in the morning. Sometimes it le it's less at night um, of sitting. And there are many different you know, practices and processes you can use to help you with meditation. But here are my couple of top bunch of top things to help you that are simple right that are simple and then once you get sort of into it you can add in other sort of deeper processes but the key thing is to build this this practice of being able to sit back in awareness so the first thing is just to close your eyes and just to be and to notice what you are aware of all right so number one just awareness of your environment as you close your eyes awareness and allowing of how you feel in your body Awareness and allowing of the quality of your mind. Awareness and allowing of your emotional state at that time. And as you bring in these awarenesses and allowing of the environment, it means we're not in resistance to what is. We're not resistance in, to, to the noise. We're not in resistance to the pain in our body. We're not in resistance to the mind. We're just allowing. And in allowing, we, can, we disengage a little so we can sit back and just observe. Right? And then we can come into observing our more interiorized state, our breath, our energetic state, and start to sit back in the body. Because in our life, we're often very out front in the doing. So learning to sit back. So this sitting back from the senses into awareness and witnessing is the first thing. Now then we can come into some breathing practices and you may have your own breath work in yoga. We call it pranayama and there are, you know, lots of different types of breathing practices in order to achieve certain states, whether it's grounding or elevating or calming, inquiring, cleansing. But a very simple practice is just to observe your breath, just to feel the breath, to witness it, to sense it. And that will bring you into a deeper space, space of presence just by observing the breath and then you can come into some other tools and practices around the breath but just to observe the breath to allow it to be a subtle breath not to actually do anything with it is the first thing 
So we have the awareness drawing in, then we have the breath. And one of my favorite tools, because it's such a powerful tool for the mind, and you've probably heard me talk about this before, is mantra. Mantra or affirmation is the most powerful tool for the mind to help to calm and shift the energetics and vibration around what you are feeling and experiencing at any moment. And mantra, if you're using sort of more Sanskrit mantra, has the energy of, of the intention embedded within its sound, right, within that vibration. So if you say Om Shanti, which means um, may there be peace, then just saying Om Shanti brings about the feeling of peace. So there are, again, many mantras that are so good to get you out of the story of the mind and to shift a vibration. And it's one of the things we work with a lot in my Be A Beacon program is different mantras to create different states depending on what patterns and belief systems you might be struggling with. Right, so we've got awareness drawing in and allowing getting out of resistance, we have the breath, witnessing, perhaps going into some techniques around it, and we have mantra. And they are the key things. Now, after that, you will be in a different state, right? So it's kind of your lead in, and then you can just sit and be and witness. And I encourage everyone to sit and be and witness for a while, just allowing, just being, just sitting back in that beingness. before you start to inquire. And if there are then some guidance you're looking for or an inquiry that you want to drop in, what I call dropping the pebble in the pond of your awareness and seeing what ripples come out, then you can ask that, then you can inquire that. We can go into a deeper sort of process. But I always, always do that towards the end of your meditation because if you bring it in too early, the mind can start to grab hold of that story. You're wanting to train, remember, the muscle of presence and witnessing. Not worry about the mind carrying on. That's okay. We're training ourselves just to witness that. So in the early stages, I wouldn't do too much self-inquiry with the mind because it can just jump back into that story, train that stillness first and just build up your capacity to hold that. And when you can hold that for longer, that's when you can then bring in some other self-inquiry. Yeah. So meditation is Fantastic. I would love to hear what your sort of struggles are. Um, there are obviously other guided visualizations to do with meditations and that kind of thing, but and they are all so valuable, so um, amazing. But what if you didn't need any of that? What if you already had those resources within you? What if you could sit and drop into that state at any time? And that's where we want to create a living practice, right? That your practice is not just on your mat or on your meditation cushion, but that you can draw on that practice in your day whenever you need a little bit more equanimity. If you have trained that muscle yourself through the power of your focus, through the power of your awareness, through the power of the tools of withdrawing a little your senses and dropping into your center, then you can access that at any time. You don't need a recording. You don't need anyone else to guide you through it. You have that capacity. And that is how we train ourselves to become an unwavering presence no matter what. And I'll get caught up in the dramas of life. So I wish you all the well with your meditation. Please PM me if you have any questions around this or drop something in the comments below. If you are looking for someone to support you in this, I am your girl. So reach out. I have different trainings available around this, particularly for women who are wanting to find more freedom in their lives from their old patterns, their old beliefs, their old things that are creating stress, that are creating, um, I don't know who I am anymore, that are creating challenges around energy levels or this sense of connection and meaning and fulfillment in the world, right? That's my, that's my passion. So reach out to me if you are feeling you need some support around that area, but I'd love to hear your experiences of meditation, anything you found to be super powerful and see you soon, my beauties. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.